This is Web Talk 6 in the M Plus Web Talk series. It covers dynamic structural equation modeling, commonly referred to as DSEM. My colleague Tihemer Asparol has done an incredible job developing the statistics, the algorithms, and the code, and has taught me a lot about this topic. We would like to acknowledge helpful input from Ellen Hamacher, as well as Luz Kaisers, who provided the data for the example that's used throughout the talk. We also want to thank our M plus team members, Twi and Noah. It has been six years since DSEM was introduced in M plus version 8.0, and there are now many tutorials on the topic. Here are some of them. On the M plus homepage, in the uh, right column, we have the M-plus short courses. We have uh, 13 topics, recorded most of them at Johns Hopkins. And in August 2017, we recorded topics 11, 12, and 13, whereof topics 12 and 13 have to do with DSEM. So I recommend that. DSEM draws on the Bayesian analysis, which is also covered in these short course videos, for instance, topic 9, and also as part of topic 11. On the home page, you also find a new tutorial video series on DSEM, which is made by Ellen Hamacher. It's a shorter form of uh, presentations and in a different style. In the leftmost um, column, you also find the M plus special topic of DSEM with its many papers that have been written so far. DSEM and RDSEM theory here, starting with the 2018 paper that began the whole story and going forward to more recent papers. You also find a list of DSEM applications and if you have a good paper that you just finished, send it to us so we can consider posting it on the website. The goal of this web talk is to present DSEM in the way I currently view the topic, uh, the framework that I draw on to understand it, and the steps I take in doing a DSEM analysis. The web talk also presents several new DSEM features made available in M plus version 8.9. These include random covariances for two level and cross classified analysis, new settings, as well as new plot options. All in all, this web talk weaves together three different strands, the analysis of the example, including interpretation of results, the statistical aspects of DSEM, and the M plus features that are available with DSEM. On slide two, you find the outline. Here I introduce the example, which has to do with mood profiles related to depression in adolescence, with the variables such as positive affect and negative affect. In section two, we're gonna talk about a common issue with DSEM type data, intensive longitudinal data with varying times of measurements, actually random times of measurements. And the handling of that is um, done by the T interval option in M plus. And I'm gonna give a little bit more detailed discussion of the practical aspects of T interval in this talk than, than what you have seen elsewhere. And this understanding of this option is also useful for creating time manually on your own. <clears throat> in section three, then, I start with um, the first step of the analysis uh, that I suggest that you should do, namely descriptive analysis to understand the data by a simple two-level basic analysis, where you can take a look at the histograms of the variables so that you can check that you get what you expect. In section four, I turn to uh, a second step, I'm going to do two-level analysis, regular two-level analysis, or two-level random analysis, where I'm going to take a look at the estimation of intra-class correlations and bring in the new topics of 
random covariance as well as the already existing topic of random variance. In section 5 then, in slide 3, I turn to uh, the DSEM topic in itself. So we start with a two-level analysis where we bring time into the model explicitly. And that's via the t-interval option. And I'm proposing here to uh, first look at univariate DSEM, one variable, to get to know it and understand how you should model it before you start a very complicated model. And I'm going to discuss various ways of drawing model diagrams, taking a look at some equations, and then also m plots input m plots. And the next step then is two-level DSEM and residual DSEM in the bivariate case. So you could look at so-called vector autoregressive models, cross-lag models of the DSEM and RDSEM kind. In section seven, I go to uh, take a quick look at categorical outcomes and look at a binary version of the negative affect variable. In section eight, I look at a cross-classified analysis as the last step in the DSEM analysis sequence. So cross-classified DSEM, where we take a look at trends over time. I'm not going to go deep into that topic. I'm going to save that for a later web talk. In section nine, then, I discuss how large the sample size and the number of time terms have to be. First, I do a simple checklist of suggestions that you may want to take a look at. And then I also propose that you might want to do your own Monte Carlo simulation to answer the question about N and T. And I show you Monte Carlo input for both two-level and cross-classified DSEM.